medcram.com. Hi, welcome to MedCram. Let's talk about pleural effusions. So what is a pleural effusion? Well, a pleural effusion is basically a collection of fluid outside of the lung. So if this were your thoracic cavity, your lungs would inflate to fill that cavity almost completely. However, sometimes fluid can actually get in around that area. So this is fluid specifically outside of the lung, not inside the lung, but outside the lung and around the lung. That's what we call a pleural effusion. Now, there are many causes of pleural effusions. We're going to talk about how to differentiate those. I also want to tell you how to look at those and, and be able to tell when you might be seeing one of those. You know, in terms of symptoms, what you're going to see is shortness of breath. That's uh, one of the most nonspecific symptoms is when this fluid starts to build up, you're going to get compression of those lungs, the inability to expand them, and shortness of breath is the result. Now, just so you know, these pleural effusions can occur on one or on both sides. There is a division between the two sides of the lung that prevents fluid from going back and forth. So it is possible to have it just on one side. The other type of symptoms that you might see are a, a feeling of fullness or chest pain. These are very nonspecific. They could be anything, but that's some of the things that you would see in a person with a pleural effusion, or it may be asymptomatic. Some things that you might see on a chest x-ray, the cardio silhouette will look something like this. And you'll see these things here called the costophrenic angles. Usually they're nice and sharp. In someone with a mild pleural effusion, you might see some what they call blunting. So this is the chest film here. You also might see some blunting in this area here. But if you're starting to see blunting already, then you've got at least 300 milliliters of fluid in the chest. As it starts to fill up, you might see a tracking haziness going up on the side. And then finally, if it was a very severe effusion, you might just see a complete whiteout. Now that's an interesting point when you say when you see a complete whiteout, because it's also possible to have complete atelectasis of a lung, which would also look like a whiteout. And you would hate to uh, do a diagnostic thoracentesis, in other words, putting a needle in there to try to drain fluid, if in fact it's the lung inside that's the problem, rather than fluid around the lung pushing on it. So how would you be able to tell the difference? This is kind of important by looking at a chest x-ray. How can you tell if a specific side is involved with a pleural effusion, which is fluid around the lung, or atelectasis, which is compression or consolidation inside the lung? You'd want to know the difference. Well, the difference is, is that a pleural effusion, if you would, is fluid, since it is fluid around the lung, it has the tendency to push to the other side. Whereas somebody with atelectasis, atelectasis is a consolidation of the lung, has the tendency to suck towards it. And so really all you have to do is look at the trachea. If you have the trachea going towards the side that is abnormal, then that is atelectasis or consolidation, a pushing towards something, for instance, say there's a tumor blocking an airway and no more air can get in. So the entire lung becomes atelectatic. It will shrink and it will suck the trachea to that side. If, however, the trachea is going away from the side of the problem, then that means there is fluid that has built up around the lung and is pushing the lung and all of its contents away. So again, you will know if there's total whiteout of one side of the lung if it is a pleural effusion, generally by looking at the trachea. If it is being pushed away from that side, it is generally a pleural effusion. Well, let's talk about how we analyze it, this fluid. Now, we said that there were many different types of causes for pleural effusion, and, and there really is uh, congestive heart failure, uh, cirrhosis, uh, kidney problems, malignancies, autoimmune conditions, infections, 
all of these things can cause pleural effusions. And really, there is a way to go through and try to figure out what it is that's causing it. And the best way to do that is to obtain a sample of fluid. We're dealing with fluid that is around the lung. Okay, this is a very stylistic uh, way of looking at it. And we've got uh, sort of the lung going up like this. So what we're doing here is we're looking at someone's back uh, at their side. Okay, here's the lung here, and this is their back. Okay, now in their back, they've got ribs. So here we have the chest wall, and here we have the lung, and here we have fluid between the chest wall and the lung. And the, the way we go about getting to this fluid is we can use an ultrasound machine that will allow us to see it. So an ultrasound probe, if you will, we'll look here and we'll be able to see on the screen where there is fluid. But you remember from anatomy that underneath each rib is a vascular bundle. Okay, and underneath each one is a vein, so I'll put a little dot here, a vein, an artery, and a nerve. The way I remember that is van, vein, artery, nerve, bundle underneath each one of these ribs. So when you stick the needle in, which is what we're going to do, we always want to go over, just over the rib. And as soon as we get into that area, then we will advance a very soft catheter into that fluid and we'll suck out the fluid. Now, sticking the needle in too far could hit the lung. That can cause a pneumothorax. And that's why we want to make sure that it's as soon as we get in. So at this point here is when we start to thread via Seldinger technique the catheter and then pull that needle out. So as the fluid is coming off, this doesn't come up and hit the needle. Okay, so now when we get that fluid, we send it off for an analysis and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. So let's just review. Again, we talked about what a pleural effusion is. It's fluid around the lung. We talked about how to identify it on a chest x-ray by the blunting of the costophrenic angles. We talked about what kind of symptoms the patients might have, shortness of breath, chest pain, chest tightness. We also talked about how to get that fluid out to analyze it, and that's called the thoracentesis. And there's a specific way of putting that in so that you limit the amount of damage and bleeding that it can occur using an ultrasound. And now once we have that fluid, we'll be able to send it off and we'll make a diagnostic approach onto what exactly is this pleural fluid coming from. So join us for the next lecture. Thank you.